our focus today is going to be on doing a writing a report based on a bar graph okay now this is what a bar graph looks like uh, a bar graph basically is the reason why it is called a bar graph is because the data is represented in the form of these bars okay these are these look like bars so they can be either horiz uh, vertical bars like this or you know your bars could also be horizontal like this okay so either of them they would still be referred to as a bar okay so this is known as a bar chart so this is the x axis and this vertical axis is known as the y axis okay now i'm just going to read the question first the chart below gives information about the age of women in australia when they gave birth to, to their first child in 1966 1986 and 2006 summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant okay now what is this chart giving you information about yeah so basically it is giving you information uh, in three different years and it is the percentage of women according to their age group when they were, gave birth to their first child okay so this is the data which uh, tells you the percentage of people of women how old they were when they gave birth to their first child okay now what do you have to do in a bar graph whatever you see in the form of this diagram you have to present it in the form of text or language so the diagram has to be converted into language right this is a ielts is a test about language so your proficiency your ability to convert whatever you see in the form of a diagram into writing okay which is easily or clearly understood by the person reading it okay so as i said earlier you have to write at least 150 words but the recommended word count is around 170 to 180 okay maximum you can go to is 190 maybe 200 try not to write more than that because you will be using up time the more you write you use up more time okay it is preferable that you use that time to focus on quality and limit your word count definitely not more than 200 okay and your answers have to be written in full no bullet points no notes so complete sentences which are organized into paragraphs that is what you have to do okay now before we go ahead uh, let us study this graph okay now i am going to ask you a few questions and that's how we will understand what is the information given in this graph okay now uh there is there is some information given below over here about the colors okay now what is this uh, what is this telling you what is this blue color or what is this orange gray and all these colors over here what is that uh, what is that indicating okay, so the unit of measurement is percentage the numbers are given to you in the form of percentages okay right now uh what is uh, what is something that is standing out in this graph what catches a, your eye in this graph age group okay uh, yeah so for example dark blue is the under 19 age group yeah then uh, the orange one is uh, age group of 19 to 24 uh gray is 25 to 30 uh the yellow is 30 to 34 age group the light blue is 34 to 39 and finally you have the green color which indicates the age group of over 40 okay now what do you have uh, on the x axis you can see that the data is given for different years okay so the x axis is giving you the years so you have three years for which this information is given 1966 1986 and 2006 okay now what is it that you see on the y axis exactly so in this this is the graph which is the tallest one okay the column which is the tallest so the highest percentage of birth okay women the highest percentage of women who gave birth to their first child was in 1966 and this was around 61% okay now one thing that you when you are quoting figures one thing that you should bear in mind is now this this number over here or for example this number over here 
or uh, anywhere else yeah these numbers what is this what would this number be how much is it 50% 50% exactly 50% okay but this number over here okay can you can you understand what is the exact number no ma'am we should ask you this figure you can ask me no yeah so what do you do you use words like approximately around about a little more than a little less than okay so whenever you are not sure about the exact figure you should use those words around approximately about okay but these figures where the exact number is given you can use it is 50% okay because it is very clearly seen that it is the exact number okay fine so as we were saying that this is the number which stands out as the highest okay so in 1966 the highest percentage of women who gave birth to their first child was in the age group of 19 to 20 now what else stands out what is the trend that you see as the years pass by what do you see so for example in this grade group what can you tell me about the trend over the 3 years anyone decrease in percentage of uh, births in that age group Ab absolutely okay so the trend that you see over here is that the percentage of women giving birth to their first child in the age group of 19 to 24 was increase decreasing steadily over the period okay so this is one significant trend that you can see in this graph okay now uh, what about uh, under 19 what can you tell me about the trend for under 19 under 19 also it was decreasing absolutely under 19 is also decreasing okay then uh, the next age group is 25 to 30 what what can you what language can you use to describe the trend of the the 25 to 30 age group rise so here rocket sorry it was rising rapidly a rocket no uh, it is not rising so rapidly if you have to i think the word that you are looking for is skyrocketing okay? okay so the word is skyrocketing to skyrocket is when your growth or increase is happening there is a huge increase in a short span of time okay so for example i'll tell you where you can use skyrocketing okay so supposing this is your graph okay this will be skyrocketing whereas this can be as uh, you know described as increasing steadily or moderately increasing but this could be skyrocketing okay so that is where you use the word skyrocketing now i was asking you about this age group what word when there is no specific trend it is ne neither rising consistently nor is it falling consistently okay something like this it is going up going down you know there is no specific pattern what is the word that you use to describe this type of a change or this type of a trend okay tell me one thing when the voltage goes up and down what is the word that you use for that fluctuation exactly so to describe this trend you can use the word fluctuating it is a fluctuating trend okay now uh, in the 30 to 34 age group okay this is your 30 to 34 age group what can you tell me about the 30 to 34 age group it is rising it is rising okay now this uh, over here if you can see this is a moderate rise That's but right. if you can see this rise over here this is a huge huge rise so you can use the word what word can you use for this Sorry rise enough. here sorry skyrocketing am no don't use skyrocketing this could be skyrocketing but this okay. you can use the word you can say that there was a significant increase okay or okay. it increased significantly okay. or you can also use the word dramatic increase okay so these are words which you can use for this uh, the second increase between 1986 and 2006 okay yeah uh so uh 
this is broadly how you are going to study and interpret the data in a graph okay now before we go ahead and look at a model answer for this uh, bar bar graph or bar chart we are just going to look at the model um, you know structure that you have for a section 1 or task 1 uh, report okay you have a very uh, you know fixed structure that you can follow if you follow this structure you will be able to write a good report in 170 to 180 words in the given time of 20 minutes okay now typically your report will have four paragraphs okay normally on an average most of your reports you can write in around four paragraphs if you think that the data is more then maybe you can add a fifth paragraph otherwise you have four paragraphs in your report now what is it that you write in your first paragraph it is very simple all you need to do is paraphrase the question okay now what is the meaning of the word paraphrase what does paraphrase mean anyone rearranging the sentence using synonyms uh, uh, come again Tush tushar what did you say rearranging the sentence using synonyms okay so uh, not necessarily rearrange you are rewriting the sentence okay the question statement you are rewriting it using different language but without changing the meaning of the sentence okay so yes you can use synonyms okay that is one way in which you paraphrase so using synonyms is one way in which you can paraphrase your sentence but there are many other methods okay you can uh, you know change the active voice into the passive voice or vice versa you can change the structure of the sentence so what was written at the end of the sentence you can bring it to the beginning of the sentence you can uh, convert a simple sentence into a complex sentence or a compound sentence or vice versa so you can use n number of methods to paraphrase the question what you need to do is ensure that you are using different language okay and rewriting the sentence without changing the meaning so that is what paraphrasing is we are going to see how the question in this particular uh, bar graph is paraphrased okay now typically you can begin your uh, introduction or the first paragraph using words like this the graph illustrates the graph demonstrates or the graph shows a very simple word or the graph depicts okay this is the language that you can use to start the sentence and following this you will paraphrase your question statement okay now some additional information that you can give in your first paragraph you can include the values okay the values are normally not written in the question so you can include the values and if the source of information is mentioned in your diagram sometimes your diagram says that the source of this information is maybe an organization or maybe a website so if that is shown in your diagram you can include that as well in the first paragraph so this is what you write in your first paragraph okay then comes the second paragraph what is your second paragraph it is a overview it is called or referred to as the overview what is it that you write in the overview any one or two general trends or the most striking features that you see in the graph is what you write in your overview okay now when you write your overview remain remember that you are not going to mention any figures there are no numbers that you are going to quote in the overview so that is how you write the overview now for example in this in this graph that we just saw in this bar graph we saw that the figure or that really stands out is this one okay other than this we also saw that in the age group of uh, under 19 or or you can say in the uh, in the age up to 24 there was a decreasing trend but 30 uh, maybe you can say uh, 30 and above there was a increasing trend so these are trends which stand out which you can write about in your overview so this is your uh, 
graph and this is the model answer. I'm going to be reading this model answer paragraph by paragraph and I'll also be explaining it to you. Okay. So let's start with the first paragraph. You paraphrase the question. Paraphrase. Yes. And if the unit of measurement is given, you can include the unit of measurement. If the um, source of information is given, you can include that as well. Okay. So I'm reading the first paragraph. The bar chart represents age-wise data of Australian women delivering their first child in percentages in 1966, 1986 and 2006. Okay. Now I'll explain to you how the paraphrasing has been done. Okay. The chart has been written as the bar chart. Okay. So this word bar has been included over here. Gives information about so instead of saying gives information, I have said represents and I have used the word data instead of information. Okay, so represents data. Now, the next set of words says about the age of women in Australia when they gave birth to their first child. So how have I written this? Instead of saying women in Australia, I have said Australian women. Okay, delivering their first child instead of saying gave birth. I have said delivering their first child and then I have included the unit in percentages in 1966, 1986 and 2006. Yeah. So you might not always be able to use synonyms. Okay. Some words you will have to use the word as it is. For example, bar chart. Okay. You have to say bar chart. You cannot use any other word for bar chart. At the worst, uh, you might say column chart. Okay, a bar chart can also be referred to as a column chart. Okay, now Australian women. Okay, Australia, you cannot use another word. So you can rephrase the way it is said. So instead of saying women of Australia, you're saying Australian women. Okay, so that is how paraphrasing can be done. Now we are looking at the second paragraph, which is the overview. I'm reiterating what is the overview. In the overview, you are writing about the significant trends that you see the points or the data points that stand out uh, in your graph and you will not quote numbers in the overview okay now uh, overall uh, this is a word which you can use to start the overview paragraph okay so overall it is clear that in the earlier decades a higher percentage of women had their first child in their 20s okay so in the first year for example the highest percentage was in the 20s people were in their 20s when they had their first child women rather not people so it is clear that in the earlier decades a higher percentage of women had their first child in their 20s but with passage of time the proportion increased considerably for women in their 30s so finally, in the last decade, you can see that the highest percentage of women given birth to their first child is in which age group? Okay, one second. It is in, I think this is 34 to, yellow is 30 to 34. Okay, yeah. So, uh, the, the, this is the key point that has been written in the overview. No numbers have been mentioned. Okay. There are other points also that you can mention. For example, you can mention that the highest percentage of in 1960, you, it, it's better not to mention the year. Okay. In the earlier times, the highest, but that is what has been written actually. Okay. If you want, you can say that in the, in this age group, the trend was fluctuating or you can say that in the age group of plus 40 the percentage of women giving birth to their first child was very low or it was insignificant okay that also can be included in your overview now in para 3 and 4 we are going to describe the data more in detail with numbers okay now let's start with in 1966 most deliveries that is around 61 percent okay so this is 61 i have used the word around because it is not clear that that 61 it's not very clear so around 61 percent happened when women were aged 19 to 24 so this is in the 19 to 24 age group 
this number dropped significantly to about 35 percent again about 35 percent in 1986 okay here it dropped to about 35 percent in 1986 by 2006 it was less than 30 percent so here this is 30 so i have said that it is less than 30 percent okay so first we have spoken about this age group that is 20 to uh, 19 to 24 age group then we come to the next age group which is this one under 19 now since it is under 19 i have said teenagers so instead of saying under 19 i have used the word teenager okay now uh, what is this the next sentence is saying just a minute huh? yeah now next we say likewise now why am i using the word likewise i am using the word likewise because the trend for under 19 age group is the same as that for 19 to 24 so that is why likewise is used as a linking word okay so likewise close to 34 so here this is close to 34 percent of teenagers became mothers in 1966 but by 2006 this proportion had dropped by more than two-thirds to approximately 11 percent so here i have directly gone from this figure to uh, to this figure no one second okay here i have not spoken about uh, this figure in uh, 1986 i have directly moved from here to here now this has actually become one third of this is 34 so one third of 34 is 11 percent so it has dropped by two thirds so that is how i have expressed it differently by 2006 this proportion had dropped by more than two thirds to approximately 11 percent okay so this is your 11 percent then in comparison the 25 to 30 age group so this age group it showed a fluctuating uh, showed a fluctuating trend with the proportion of women having their first child increasing sharply from around 36 percent in 1966 to 50 percent in 1986 and then decreasing to approximately 38 percent so this is 38 percent in 2006 okay so in this first paragraph i have spoken about the age group less than 30 three age groups less than 30 okay now i'm going to lead the read the last paragraph the last paragraph says that on the other hand now on the why have i used the words on the other hand because in the over 30 age group the trend is increasing in the less than 30 age group it was a falling trend but over 30 it is increasing that is why i have used the words on the other hand okay so on the other hand is normally used when you are talking about opposing viewpoints or opposing trends so on the other hand women aged 30 to 34 so this is the yellow one okay women aged 30 to 34 and 34 to 39 that is the other blue uh, birthing their first child rose significantly from around 12 percent so this is 12 percent uh, and 8 percent this is 8 percent so 12 and 8 percent to in 1966 to almost 45 and 30 percent respectively in 2006 so this is your 45 percent and this is um, 30 percent respectively in 2006 so again over here i have moved directly to 2006 from here and to this place okay now how do you use the word respectively in a sentence when you are talking about two different items okay like here i have spoken about the age groups the rise in the age groups 30 to 34 and 34 to 39 so the first percentage uh, corresponds to the first age group and the second po uh, percentage corresponds to the second age group so that is how you use the word respectively okay that is where you need to use the word respectively to indicate that the first figure pertains to the first item mentioned and the second figure pertains to the second item mentioned in your sentence okay 
Lastly, in comparison, women aged 40 plus were an insignificant minority at around 2% and 4% in 1966 and 2006. I think it would be respectively over there. Okay. Yeah. And 2006 respectively. Okay. So, in the second body paragraph, we have spoken about the last, the other three age groups. Okay. So, this is how you have to uh, interpret or write about your detail, uh, data more in detail in paras 3 and 4. Okay. You should be able to compare uh, figures or data items uh, if it is comparable. So, in this case, it is definitely comparable. So, comparisons have also been made. Okay.